Welcome back fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 here with my continuing um, playthrough of Hearts of Iron 3 with Black Ice 8 and Third Reich events. We're going to continue right now with our operations in the Red Sea here. Uh oh. We've lost... Were we taken out a cruiser, or what was that? But we can roll back and see. Okay, payment received from Finland. That. Okay, lost. Okay, got some manpower back. Okay, um, SS, or higher SS and police fewer Nord. Um, Quisling was a national socialist, but a, um, a Norwegian national socialist in that he wanted Norway to be a, um, you know, a, a member of the New World Order, but as a, you know, Norwegian independent country. Where the SS very much looked at Norway as going to be part of the Reich at some point, um, integrated into it. Uh, so there was a fair amount of conflict between um, some of the German establishment and Quisling's um, viewpoint. And that lasted until the end, until the very end. And they were still squabbling as Germany was dying, which was um, sort of pathetic. But, um, so th like in many of the other occupied areas, the SS um, set up um, higher SS and police headquarters to manage internal security situations. And, how do we pronounce it? Wetzel? Um... Fritz Wetzel was placed in charge um, in Norway. He wrote the book um, Celebrations of the SS Family. And this was um, set up not in, to celebrate the SS Family, but the, the celebrations that the SS Family should have through the year. And this should really be one of the things it just puts to um, rest any idea that the Nazis um, were Christians um, they weren't they were trying to destroy Christianity um, yes there was a, an official sort of Nazi Christian church but I think um, most all the members you know the clergy members in there were duped if they believed they, they may have been um, very strong German patriots but they were duped into the idea that the um, Nazi establishment was going to allow, allow Christianity to be worshipped in um, the new um, Germany eventually. Uh, they couldn't do it overnight because they knew that there would be a revolt against that if they banned Christianity and Christian practices. What was really um, very much put out within the SS were these um, new religious practices and um, this book was um, one of them. Uh, I don't know that it was secret or other people, you know, couldn't easily get a hold of it. But it was more or less kept within the SS family. And they were very much working within that, um, within the members to create this new neo-paganistic religion. Um, and this was just one of them. This book um, described, you know... Uh, the various celebrations throughout the year that the, the SS family should do. Um, and as it, which was given out as a Yuletide gift um, by Himmler to the SS. So it was given out to all of the, you know, members of the SS on, on what to believe and how to believe and how to practice their new religion. So, you know, this was not, I don't, I don't think in detail this was um, a common knowledge by um, many and I don't even know that it was you know um, 
all Nazi members thought this way. This is sort of the inner circle, but it's getting down to the, um, not just the inner circle of the elites, it's getting down to the base members of the SS that was put out. And that's the picture of a period book that collector have that's him. So, yes, we're going to have that up in Norway. Now, what we will see in some later events, um, that in Norway um, and other countries too, but particularly in um, the right um, racial group countries as the SS saw them, they were establishing local SS units. And this is where there was um, Quisling's movement. Um, the SS was record recruiting locally to undermine um, Quisling, and they continue to um, have conflicts. Okay. Deutsches Theater. This is an event from the um, uh, um, uh, the Deutsches, or the Deworm. Okay. Um, Deutsches Theater was a German language theater in Oslo during German occupation in Norway. It was established in January 1941 following the order of Joseph um, Turboven, as we have seen, he was the, um, an earlier event from, uh, TRE. He was, um, the German ruler, if you will, of Norway. And he was um, also very much on board with the idea that, um, presumably all of at least, the, I don't know what they were thinking about Finland racially, um, but they were definitely thinking about all the Nors countries that were going to become part of um, German and that they were Aryan type peoples. Um, he was very much on that and in, and in constant um, conflict with Quisling over this. So we could either create this or not. I think we're going to do it. There's a bunch of chances. Um, the Deworm is a very good programmer um, in setting up these things with um, various possible effects. You can see some of the thing so we'll see what we don't get notified okay and as in the earlier episode I wrote down a note hold on just getting the piece of paper here for the oil refinery this is going to be a similar situation um, that we can decide to do this or not. Um, set up a synthetic um, refinery for the people here. Yeah. Um, a lot of metal, a lot of fuel, a um, lot of energy, um, lots of money, and a lot of supplies now. So I want to put down the, the date there. Just Four, um, two, six. Because I have, I'm playing this in such short, like I was saying before, sessions. I want to make sure that um, we will have this fire at the appropriate time. If I have to manually go in and do it, I will. I do want the, um, I think this will be good for us. And Spearhead Doctrine. It's the one that's Okay, so that reduces our width, combat width for a bunch of units. We'll move over to the Grand Map. Yeah, we'll do Mass Assault. Let's see what decision we need to make. Upgrade the Reich Division. Okay, Das Reich, yes. We will do that. That basically ends the SSVT. 
Let's go here in Berlin. Now they use and form um, the um, SS Kido or command here uh, as part of it. Um, I think it's partly because well, well they have boxers. Well, it's now they've changed over to the new style, but um, as well. So we're gonna send these guys back up to here. Still trying to get reinforcements down into here. Yes, we want SS Mountain Artillery. I don't know if I'm going to build any, but we do want it. Okay, another event that we should have fired before, but um, again, that the fate of Great Britain. Um, event that I coded up that's now part of um, Black Ice. This um, is a similar situation to the um, Vichy event. Um, it does. Um, it doesn't specifically, you know, allow us to win the war or anything like this, but this um, sets up war goals for Britain. Great Britain shall be ours. That's basically setting up that we're going to annex um, Great Britain. Um, we must set up the right um, type of government. This sets it up so that um, we occupy Britain. Uh, now we have to still defeat them, invade, defeat, you know, conquer the whole thing um, for for the effect to have to happen. It's just we're setting up a war goal here, or um, the English people are not our true enemies. We're still going to be at war with them. We're still going to have to defeat them, but we set up a puppet state um, for them, which uh, obviously um, we would get some support. Uh, from puppet states like we do with the other puppet states, but not as much as if we either occupied or annexed them. Um, with these, and depending on which one you pick, it does very little bit. Um, there becomes events that once that happens to give territories, um, you know, places like Singapore to um, Japan or... Um, Egypt or other places to Italy um, there's various you know um, post-war divvying up of British colonies to people and you will have um, a certain level of say over it it isn't a um, support the attack um, it isn't all at least um, you know forced upon you so you can um, decide whether or not to do that and it will affect your relations um, with certain countries whether you do some of that or not you know like British Somalia land officially to annex it over to Italy kind of things instead of just occupying it we're gonna pick the middle road here of that we're gonna do um, we set up the right occupation if you will but we're gonna do it but eventually the I, the thought is is behind this is obviously if you want to set up a world conquering um, German Reich where you own everything, you want to do that. If um, you see it as eventually um, in a post-war world, you're going to let um, Britain be a uh, puppet state as long as it stays the right type of people. 
Or like I say, you can let it go. So we're going to go with that. Okay, and we've had HG101 and HG103. So here's two. Okay. Raise more flak units to protect industrial centers. Okay. Hmm. I think this is a... GGA event? I'm not sure. Um... Or no need. Okay. 1% until July 41. That's a while, but very little. So I like that because it kept, people use 5% a lot, but since we've got, you know, 885 um, uh, ICs, 5% is a lot. And some metal, some manpower. That's very reasonable. Get a bunch of any aircraft guns. Now we've already have the the earlier flieger zone that they um, set up. So, but this also includes much stuff includes um, like um, Sarbuchen and others in that zone, but also more into Berlin and Kiel and Konigsberg. So yes, we will do that. Very good event. And it doesn't put it in the production queue, does it? Make sure. No. Okay. So, modders that may be watching this, though, I, I know Hearts of Iron 4 is coming out sooner rather than later. Um, if you keep using generic 5% late in the war, make the time sh that you're um, doing it short. Okay, mechanized HQs. Let's do motorized SS. I'll give us that. Make the time short because you can readily start. Now I'm going to continue the attack and occupation with the uh, the paratroopers there. But paratroopers move um, fairly slowly. And I have other uses for them. As in paratrooping into other islands and other, other locations. So we want to get them once we secure the bridgehead here. We're not going to continue to pursue attacks. I'll force these subs up to operate from some other base. Good, the Italians are attacking them there, presumably so. Okay, self-propelled artillery brigade, yay. Advanced. Okay. Still going into Sanaa? No, you don't get any ICs. I'm helping you out enough here. Okay. Spring mud starts to clear. Who cares? We're not dealing with that. Okay, infrastructure levels.
We're going to need... Let me make sure that they are... Okay, these guys. We're going to need these guys to occupy there. So I don't want revolts springing up at inopportune times. Well, we're getting 4.1. Well, from there I know it's just a drop in the bucket, but... Still useful. I think this may repair. Which would help it. More. A couple of ICs. Okay, CAG bomber focus. Here. We will eventually have some CAGs, but not many, so I'm not looking at being a major naval air power. These guys are still moving in against there. Oh, oh they're going to win. And they just did. Which will force all these guys to another part of the world. No, no, no. Take the metal. So now, Nile Delta, and see we're even operating our new industrial zone has advanced. That was the old um, heavy industry tech. And we're gonna let that go because that will help our ICs, IC efficiency, and yes, it eats up more resources, which is as it should. And we've been forced to conquer on Yemen. Okay. We're going to quickly look at Yemen. Okay. Well. Supply situation. We're going to run another into Aden. Aden was the British colony. Obviously. Let's go all the way from Palo to Aden. Okay, and we also need to look at other production. I'm going to produce two more coastal submarines. So I was producing two that replaced the losses that we were off Britain, but I'm seeing that uh, we're no longer going to be doing much operation in the Mediterranean, but we can place them in the Mediterranean, getting them into the Indian Ocean to operate, as well as off various other places, and they're cheap, so we're going to do that. And we're going to do um, let's do four motor torpedo boats. We just lost the one, but they're going to continue to be rather useful to us. I think at least. Okay, Lair Brigade 900 motorized. 
Yes, we want them. Okay, um, I just thought this was interesting. I uh, came across a top part is an ad for Airdoll um, boot polish uh, at the time. And there's a picture of a can of it and a couple other um, military um, boot polish types. And I just, yeah, I don't know of your impressions, but obviously growing up watching a lot of World War II movies, including um, in a movie set during it, the German jack boot polished up. It just ring true and had to do that and put together the um, thing. So we can um, spend a little bit of supplies, gain some infantry unit command and control, or no, don't need to polish your boots and have um, esprit de corps. So, but that's what we're going to go with that. So boot polish. And yes, boot polish is good to keep the leather from going bad and rough. Okay, losing oh, some strategic bombing. Where are they bombing us? I want to know because I want to... Okay, here. We need to make sure we've got enough interceptors in the northern part. I think that's covering them. No, not quite that far. I don't want to fight them over Britain. These guys only at night. Just in case they have a smart enough AI to send out. Well, we're going to let them rest. We're going to let these guys rest. I don't want to get... Covering the area, but no. There we go. Make sure of it. But yeah, obviously they were engaged in on their way in and on the way out through all those air battles. I actually sort of hope they continue to do this and that we end up chewing them up a lot more than they're chewing us up. You know, with their damage to either the fighters or to, obviously in this case, either resources or I see, so that they foolishly continue the thing if we... Okay, advance, advance. And we're going to send, because there's an airport here, all the rest of the Paris down to Aden. Now, hopefully, the any significant warships were based there. They're gone. These guys, hopefully, will be gone there. Okay, I think we're going to end the episode here. Um, thanks for viewing. Thanks for liking the episode. Please post your comments. I know I say that all the time, but... I watch um, a lot of TV news, and they want you to um, tweet them and like their fi Facebook page. I don't yet have one of those. Or I watch how to make successful YouTube videos, and they say call to action, which is what I'm doing here, is often overlooked. So we're calling you to action to like the videos. Thanks so much. See you next time.